Welcome everyone to our very intro video uh, for the first steps in working with custom items. Custom items is a premium spigot plugin uh, that while you do have to pay a bit for it since it is premium, uh, it not only supports a lot of Minecraft versions, but the engine is actually really powerful. Uh, it can do a surprising amount of kind of whatever you want with uh, not too much difficult uh, programming or uh, config design from a server admin or dev. We're on this page because we're going to get started with uh, working with the custom items wiki. Uh, and don't worry, you're not going to have to read through the whole wiki or anything. We're just here to pick up the custom items example files zip. This is going to give us some files to kind of start with because uh, in my experience, the best place to start with custom items as a plugin uh, is going to be reverse engineering a few of these example files and then actually getting those custom items to load into your server and into your game. Because once you do that, not only is it a great feeling of accomplishment, uh, but you can build from that and continue to modify and learn more until uh, a lot more of this plugin will make sense. Because there is a lot thrust upon you here, a lot of different pages, but the documentation is not that user friendly, it's a little weak. Uh, but that's all right once you kind of either watch these videos uh, and then navigate through it kind of with uh, trial and error yourself. I'm confident that you'll be able to handle that. So once you download this zip file, mine is going to land right here. I'm running a uh, test build server from this USB drive here. Uh, we've got this zip file. We're going to extract it and we're going to dive right into it. Now, there are two clumps in these custom test files. The very first is uh, the resource pack. We are not going to touch that yet. That's coming up really soon. Uh, but we are instead going to be focusing on the YML, YML files uh, for our custom items. Now, the first time you open it, it might look something like this. And you could select something like Notepad or WordPad. I do recommend, if you plan on going deeper with this plugin, uh, to download Notepad++. Uh, but for me, we're just going to keep using Notepad right now, and you can even make it default so that it always opens with that uh, when you click it. So our custom item, Purple Apple, pops up, and uh, honestly, it's rather underwhelming, I, I would think. Uh, not a lot happening here, and to be honest, it's not even at a plug-and-play point. If you just drop this in your, in your server and you're expecting a Purple Apple to just show up, uh, it won't because it's not fully here yet, which helps us because now we can uh, work through it to kind of together in this tutorial format. So let's get started right away with the very first thing you need to understand with your custom item is its ID. Uh, when you're referring to items in Minecraft, uh, you usually would refer to it as something like diamond or diamond ore for the block. Uh, this portion is the item specific ID and this portion is the source. Uh, whenever you're referring to an original vanilla Minecraft item, you're always going to prefix it with this. But this is the actual ID of the item. Uh, that is where it's going to go for the files and stuff like that. And for custom items, the ID of your item is actually the name of its YML file right in here. So these are actually the IDs for these items, such as Purple Apple. Well, okay, uh, then the ID for that would actually be Purple Apple. Uh, if you were doing some sort of give yourself command, you would actually be using that as the ID. But it should be noted, uh, custom items does not hook right into the vanilla give yourself command, so you would have to use the plugins uh, give yourself command. But the formatting is, or the, the uh, format is exactly the same. So this is how you would give yourself, you know, purple apple one. There we go. Uh, you'd give yourself one of these purple apples. But like I mentioned before, these are not at a plug and play point yet. If we just throw this in our server, uh, you'd give yourself this and nothing would happen. Uh, so let's make something happen to kind of get our get ourselves feeling like we're getting started with this uh, plugin. So the very first uh, thing that we want to start with, now that we have our item ID confirmed, is the friendly name. This is going to be a string, which means it's text between quotation marks. Uh, nothing fancy, no color codes or nothing. Let's just focus on uh, taking kind of the original 
uh, friendly name of what this item is going to be. Now, if we're talking about this as a purple apple, we're going to give it the friendly name purple apple. It's going to make it easier for us to find and for players to identify later. Uh, but if you're thinking, but I want I want it to look cool, I want my players to, to see it, you might already be peeking down here at the display name, which is what actually shows up in game. This is a string that can use color codes, so uh, this would be the color code for uh, magenta. And this is going to turn this text into a magenta format that when players go to pick up this item in game, uh, and they look at it in their inventory, it's going to say purple apple as the name of the item in purple text. When they hover over the item, it's also going to show a, a tag line, a lore line right here of a purple apple. Now let's add a bit of customization flair before we go any farther. And uh, I want the actual words purple apple to be color-coded magenta as well. And just to show that we are modifying the in-game item, I usually like starting with the name and the lore. It feels like I'm getting some structure before worrying about the actual item actions. Uh, we're also going to add a, a purple apple from a lost era, just as a second line of lore. Notice how easy that was. We just put in these extra spaces to put in a dash, and now we have another line of lore, just like copying from the first one. Uh, if you aren't that familiar with working with YML files, I'll just take this quick moment to plug. You do need to be using spaces. It is tempting to use tab, but that's why Notepad++ is nice. It converts tabs into spaces. Uh, but if you're not afraid of jamming that spacebar a bunch, uh, just make sure that all of these all of these indentations are, you know, two spaces, four spaces. There is a pattern, but make sure you're always doing it with spaces, not tabs or anything like that. Uh, which is why I find it easiest to reverse engineer from an existing line so that you don't have to guess at what's going on. Uh, the very next thing we're going to look at, we will come back to this, but for now we are not going to use a texture ID. We're going to get rid of that. Uh, that line will come back up in just a, a few videos later, but for now we're not going to use any custom textures because we just want to get our item working. That's all we want right now. Uh, now before I go any farther, uh, I want to explain probably the first big decision that comes with your custom item, and that is the source. We are going to talk about the item's material. Think of this as the original source material that you are then modifying into something else. If you want to make a custom sword, uh, you'll probably put the material as something like a diamond sword, because you want to start with the attributes of a sword and work from there. That makes it way easier for you than coding it completely from scratch. You can code it completely from scratch, but why when you could have a lot of the coding, you know, just call on Minecraft's coding for you already. The material is going to be a string, so it's going to be between quotation marks, and the material is going to refer to a, mine a vanilla Minecraft item. Can you guess which one? An apple. Easy enough. Uh, the material is going to refer to an apple. This is also nice for fallback measures, meaning that if uh, something loads wrong, such as uh, the, the custom texture or visuals of the item don't load quite correctly, uh, Minecraft as kind of a fallback plan B will refer to this for what the item does. So if we want it to act mostly like an apple, it's going to do this. But here's the catch. This line right down here. It defaults to false because we want this item to be worked from the ground up, but we're going to switch this to true for now because when an item can be used generically, what we're essentially saying is that by default it should act like its material, which makes sense for us. If we want our purple apple to, you know, before we mod anything, we just want it to act like a normal apple. We're going to have this used generically to true because now it is going to by default act like an apple unless we tell it to do something else. We will get to that in the next video because we want to get everything started right now. We're just getting started with laying the groundwork. The next video is going to really pick up speed I believe so uh, we're just going to start with this. We have now made, this is done, it's saved, a purple apple that is going to look and act like an apple, but it's going to be called Purple Apple, it's going to have this custom lore, and that gives us the framework to start making it do all sorts of custom things uh, in our next video. But before we end here, we're going to take this last minute to actually plop that Purple Apple into our server. I'm going to copy it from our custom test files. I'm going to go into my server. This is not a tutorial for where and how to configure plugins. There are plenty of tutorials for that. We're going to head right into the custom items folder. And in the items folder, you can already see I have a few there. 
I'm just gonna drop my purple apple. Now, you're probably going, well, what's that purple apple? That's one that I've already worked with. Uh, but notice that its ID has that underscore, whereas the one we're working with today is just purple apple, all one word. So let's pull up our server. And I'm going to go to custom items, reload. That's going to have it update and scan for all of the custom items I'm now working with. Look at all six. There was five, now there's six. Yay. Uh, you definitely want to do a full restart of your server before you really get things rolling, but for testing purposes, that reload has actually proven to be really stable and just quickly updating kind of what's going on uh, with custom items, updating these recipes and uh, uh, other configs for the item. So let's jump on that server. There we go. We're sitting right here and obviously I'm getting kind of hungry. So I'm going to, just like the command I showed you before, custom items give myself a purple apple. Like I said, all one word. I'm gonna give myself five of them. And there they are. As you can see, it is acting and looking just like an apple. It can stack like an apple. Uh, it even has that data tag for an apple, but it still has that custom title and that custom lore text, including the new stuff we put in in this video, allowing us to then, you know, raise the ultimate question, does it act like an apple? And it does, it restores those two full hunger, you know, bar meters, those four hunger points. It has a bit of saturation to help us heal up. Uh, it's, it's acting like an apple, which I will admit, as we conclude this video, does not seem that exciting. You feel like you just took all, you know, 10 minutes to make an apple, but we're actually literally one step away from kind of turning it into our first fully custom, fully acting custom item. So check out the next video for how to implement uh, triggers and actions to start making an item act the way you want from scratch. See you in the next video.